Yesterday evening, April 29th, 2022, Major League Baseball made one of the most baffling decisions I've ever seen a major professional sports leagues make in my entire life. They have handed Trevor Bauer, based on a, a mythical evidence, nothing that we've seen before because we've covered this from toes to titties, and now we're going to do it, and you guys can probably tell by the length of this video, and guess what we're going to be doing going from the gestation of this entire thing, the original text messages, all the way up until yesterday evening with Major League Baseball handing out a two-year suspension. Effective April 29th, the evening of, all the way until April 29th, 2024. For what? Don't know. This is effective. The commissioner's office, thanks to the joint domestic abuse, sexual abuse, and child abuse policy that they have, which I also have, which we're going to be going through at some point or another. So for those of you who just want the TLDR on this, yeah, Trevor Bauer, pending appeal, is going to be out until April 29th of 2024. This is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And like I said, we're going to cover everything, okay? We're going to give you a nice little primer, a one-stop shop video, because because I, I was just baffled by this decision. Frankly, it's uh, preposterous. Uh, following this case, every single step along the way, okay, every single development that came out, I see nothing, okay? Even the civil courts didn't see anything, okay? Even the police, no criminal charges were filed in anything like that. He got off without any sort of discipline because Trevor Bauer didn't do anything fucking wrong. But apparently, Major League Baseball's commissioner's office, who is... The one to hand down this suspension found it necessary. Why? I don't know. They don't need to release their findings either. Let's get into the decision here. Trevor Bauer's domestic violence suspension. MLB hands the Dodgers pitcher two-year ban without pay. So for all of you speds that are out there saying, Oh, at least he's on administrative leave and he's still getting paid for it. No, now he's going to be out on his ass. He's not allowed to attend any club functions. He's not allowed to participate in any official Major League Baseball events in any form or fashion. He's not allowed to represent the company. He's not allowed to do the one thing in life that he has absolutely spent his entire life curating in order to become the best possible product that he can be. He's not allowed to do that for two years. But what about the rest of his contract, okay? Well, when we get to the domestic violence policy, we'll get to that. But try to keep this regimented so we can have proper time stamps i'm gonna go all out in this video so everybody is up to speed on this the only thing that i'm not going to be covering is the new allegations i might get really angry and do the video tomorrow or it'll be on monday the one with the washington post and they're saying oh new accusers uh all you need to do is just go back until uh, august or something it'll be in the i card above my head if you're watching on youtube or if you're on rumble or odyssey it should still be up on those platforms regardless but those aren't new accusations okay and i'm going to prove that again tomorrow Tomorrow or Monday, not entirely sure on that, but this is going to be the Lindsay Hill accusations because, oh, they aren't going to say that because she's alleged to be a victim of sexual something or other. And it's like, no, she made all of this shit up. She fucking bragged about it and no court and no police officers found Trevor Bauer to be doing anything fucking wrong. I'm a little heated if you couldn't tell. Anyways. Major League Baseball's commissioner, Rob Manlet, Manfred, sorry, Manfred, announced on Friday that Los Angeles Dodgers right-handed pitcher Trevor Bauer has been suspended for 324 games, two full fucking seasons, under Major League Baseball's joint domestic violence, sexual assault, and child abuse policy. Now, I bet you're also thinking at the same time, because he's been suspended his last day that he played, okay, was June 28th. What about that extra time that he was on administrative leave? Doesn't count towards that two-year suspension. So effectively, three-year suspension for what? Pfft, nothing. Oh, this is absolutely ridiculous. Just when you thought that there might be a step back against Me Too with all of the Amber Heard, Johnny Depp stuff, go stuff going on, nah, there's still a bunch of simps out there. There are still, still far too many blue-pilled idiots in high-powered positions and when we get to that policy because i see it it's right there on my tab over there once we get to that you're gonna see that it's ingrained in the writing that it fucks anybody who just manages to catch a case it's really shocking back to this bauer will not be paid during his suspension which takes effect immediately and will stretch into the 2024 season his suspension is by substantial margin the longest in history of the policy which dates back to 2016 and then also now would be probably a decent time right to go 
go through all of the other suspensions that have been out there. Like, even if you look at the long, the most notable suspensions in baseball, okay, all of them stem from either messing with the outcomes of games, okay, because you see Pete Rose right there, obviously, bet on games and all that stuff. A.J. Hinch involved with, you know what, hey, Astro sign stealing, and now he's back in the league, so don't even worry about it. Alex Rodriguez, the most high-profile performance-enhancing drug user that was suspended. All of those guys... All of their suspension, with the exception of Pete Rose, who is suspended for life, have paid their dues and they received a lesser suspension than Trevor Bauer. And they actually did shit. And it was confirmed. And some of these guys that are on the list, they were convicted of fucking crimes. And Trevor Bauer did nothing even close to that. And he's getting twice as long as the longest sentence that isn't, of course, a lifetime suspension. Yes, AJ Hinch, Jeff Luff now, Astros manager, GM, through the 2020 World Series. So they're already back. John Capella, Braves GM, permanently banned for, yes, literally obfuscating the rules of international signing and being caught red-handed doing so. Okay, permanently banned. So lifetime banned. Chris Correa, uh, yeah, permanently banned, but also sentenced to 46 months in federal prison, actually caught a fucking conviction, which we're going to see, once again, a reference that domestic violence policy, it's in there, okay, that's one of the justifiers in order to hand out a suspension, and ooh, the other one is very, very interesting, Alex Rodriguez, yes, 211 games, which was reduced to a full season 162, and you remember, over 300 games for Trevor Bauer, and then you, you lump in the fact that he didn't play after the 20 8th of June from last fucking year? I can't believe this. this is ridiculous. Steinbrenner, yeah, George Steinbrenner, honest, or yeah, back when the Yankees were fun. Pete Rose, permanently banned, yes, for betting on games. The second time around for life in 30 games beforehand. And then, yes, Ted Turner, reduced on appeal. And many other notable people have been hit with PED cases, okay, what, what's, the, what's the policy, right? 60, 90, and then a full season. Robinson Cano immediately springs to mind, okay, he was out for, for a full season, but he's back and he's playing DH for the Mets right now, right? And for other games, and I know it doesn't quite fit format-wise, but uh, this is the NBA. You might be able to tell if you guys can see. Yeah, you can see there, definitely. The longest suspension for a basketball player in the NBA was Ron Artest. And you remember what that was for? That was for the Malice at the Palace, where there was a big melee in the fucking stands. I think that that's probably suspension-worthy, right? Because that was during a fucking game, okay? And that involved a multitude of people. Nobody else is even close and that was the longest suspension okay that was 86 games you might be able to see it but i'm just reading it as well 86 games 73 regular season games and 13 playoffs games so the rest of the 2004 2005 season everybody else 68 games underneath that for latrice or yeah for latrell spreewell uh, 64 or uh, 65 games for mark stevens 50 38 and then it drops off precipitously those are the longest suspensions okay that's not involving point shaving or you know what fixing the games or drug suspension which kind of, you know, a lot of those lifetime bans that immediately get overturned upon appeal for guys like Tyreek Evans, Chris Anderson, all of those guys end up catching a couple of beefs on the drug charges, but that's a repeat offender, okay? And that's what goes on in the NBA all the time, okay? It happens again, and we're just going to take a look at the longest suspensions in National Football League, who, remember, within the past 20 years, you had a couple of convicted felons, okay? Go away. Plaxico Burris, the longest one that's on there, right? He went to jail for an accidental shooting. You remember he brought a Glock to a fucking nightclub, okay? Didn't even bother with a holster, just put it in his fucking sweatpants and shot himself in the leg. Went to jail and then came back and got signed by the New York Jets, okay? Who else is on there? Yeah, oh, Michael Vick, okay? Yo, he was out for two years. Well, that, that should be comparable, right? He went to fucking jail for Christ's sakes, okay? And then he came back and he was an all-star. But these guys actually did shit to get suspended. What did Bauer do? player is a name in every single court it's fucking unbelievable but back to the statement here so just to clear things up bauer 31 has not pitched since last june of 20 or last june 28th 2021 days after that start he was accused of assault and then placed on administrative leave which was all the way up until yesterday okay april 29th the administrative suspension that he was on, which is effectively just him trying to do the right thing, play along with Major League Baseball, only to get fucked by the ethereal domestic violence policy, which will 
which will make your skin crawl once we get through it. So one organization that's actually been consistent in this and that I do not hold responsible at all have been the Dodgers themselves. Because if you remember at the beginning, okay, they weren't the ones to place him on administrative leave. That came from the commissioner's office, okay? I remember uh, Dave Roberts was also saying, well, you know what, hey, until they do something about it, we're just going to let him pitch because he's having a hell of a season, okay? That was the right approach to take. And even still, with their uh, response right now, they're actually very measured. Okay, the league uh, office final finally made a decision on the Dodgers pitcher and the Dodgers statement. Today, we were informed that Major League Baseball has concluded its investigation into allegations that have been made against Trevor Bauer and the commissioner has issued his decision regarding discipline. The Dodgers organization takes all allegations of this nature very seriously and it does not condone or excuse any acts of domestic violence or sexual assault. Okay, standard boilerplate procedure, right? We fully cooperated with MLB's investigation since it began, and we fully support MLB's joint uh, domestic violence, sexual assault, and child abuse policy, and the commissioner's enforcement of the policy. Okay, we understand that Trevor has the right to appeal in the commissioner's decision. Therefore, we will not comment further until this uh, process is complete. Not condemning anybody, just saying policies in place were kind of fucked and our hands are tied on this. And then if you might have been doing some extracurricular reading in and of your, on your own rather, you might have noticed Trevor Bauer also had his own statement and he's going to be appealing the decision because it's fucking ludicrous, okay? It's absolutely ridiculous. In the strongest possible terms, I deny committing any violation of the league's domestic violence and sexual assault policy. I'm appealing this action and expect to prevail. As we have throughout this process, my representatives and I have no respect the confidentiality of the proceedings. I don't. Lindsay Hill is a cunt. Case in point, here's an old article from one of the old videos that I did just about over a year, well, just about a year at this point. Christ, when all of this shit kicked off. This is how long he's been going through this shit okay i've stated multiple times right i don't really have a vested interest sure i respect what trevor bauer does on the field but i think that he's been railroaded the entire process right and we followed this along every single step every single court proceeding every single charge that was never brought i just think that he got fucked on this one because he's the perfect target you know why because there's an analogy to be drawn here okay there's two people going through similar situations and in fact the comparison is in a much worse place okay Deshaun Watson okay at the time that he caught those 21 allegations which are total fucking horseshit to begin with anyways no he the various different colors and shades of accusations that were levied against Watson when he was quarterback of the Houston Texans he was not placed on administrative leave. He was not suspended by the NFL. No, no, no. You've seen the list that was there. He was never once, okay? He missed the entire season because he was sitting out because the Houston Texans are a dumpster fire and he's kind of a bit of a bitch in and of himself. But then he got traded off to the Cleveland Browns and they ain't doing fuck all about that, which is totally fucking fine, by the way, okay? You have to, you have a burden of proof if you are an accuser, but not anymore. This is not the society we live in, okay? Trevor Bauer has to prove his innocence okay which is a totally fucked system it's not legally binding it's not lawful it's just at the whims of some social justice warriors and high powers or high position of powers my mistake Let's just go through some of these text messages. Let's just refresh everybody's memory, shall we? There we have Lindsay Hill right there with her with her eyes blocked out because we believe all or we abu we believe all women and all accusers of sexual deviancy or whatever the fuck we're alleging at this point and yes this is from july 14th tw uh 2021 so from last year the woman who accused trevor oh dodgers yeah dodger star trevor bauer of sexual assault sends text messages uh, to a friend boasting how she got into his head when the la pitcher lost two games to the san diego padres shortly after their first meeting a cache of social media messages sent by miss hill Lindsay hill uh to a male friend and seen by dailymail.com also revealed that the previously had a fling or er, fling with padre star fernando T Jr. and resigned from the team's pod squad group uh, of brand ambassadors, just whores, professional whores, uh, when the relationship was discovered. She also talked about how she got my hooks into him during a discussion about Bauer and responded to a meme about the Padres win, telling her friend, uh, you're welcome for getting in his head. She followed that with a dollar smile emoji. This was all fucking planned oh but the commissioner's office obviously has some evidence that would just lead us to believe that these accusations are true or at least suspension worthy right fuck off this was one of her friends uh 
Lindsay's friends coming forward saying, uh, I reached out to both sides of the plaintiff directly and to Trevor's agent. My goal is to getting these messages out there to help the truth come to light. I'm not necessarily trying to corroborate anybody's story or say anyone is right or wrong here. I'm just trying to make sure all pertinent information is out there. I'm trying to make sure that it's fair. No, exactly. Thank God for Simpson the friend zone because without him, these messages probably never would have came to light and Trevor would have lost a civil suit and he probably would have been charged with something. This is a friend of mine accusing somebody I've never met in my whole life of something pretty terrible. My goal is to just make sure that all of the facts that are need, oh, need to be are present for all the parties so they can make the right decision. I've spoken to both of them and given my statements to both of them. Uh, there's no secrets. My attorney's letter went to both sides and we're making sure that both sides have the information. His attorney, Dan Gillian, uh, added, my client just wants to do the right thing and he has spoken to the police in a Major League Baseball and passed on the information. Messages which were dated October 2nd, 2020 start with Hill's response to a social media post showing Tatis in the air in which it says how he hopped on top of me which is probably what ended up oh there's yeah there's the text right there probably immediately pissed him off because it's a him talking to his female friend no such thing no he's like oh man I, I guess I'm never gonna have a shot here so now it's just time to get out of the friend zone and hey Payback's a bitch. Then goes on to tell her friend that the player is king, adding best sex of my life. I'm gonna let you guys read that because it's, ugh, I don't need those audio clips out there. Just jumping in here. Yeah. So after describing sex with Fernando Tatis Jr., saying that it was life changing, uh, he was the reason I had to resign from the pod squad. And then according to his friends, well, now you can hook up. Oh, now we have to hook up casually. Truly. Wait, you know who I'm talking about here. And then jumping ahead to April 19th, okay, this is when all of the accusations were beginning between Lindsay and Trevor Bauer. I'm going to his house this Wednesday, I already have my hooks in him, and, and then sending over a screenshot of DMs or text messages, I don't know, I don't know all that shit. And they look pretty damning in and of themselves, and you guys probably are going to have a tough time seeing that, because even I can on my screen here. Crowns don't scare me, Bauer, bring it, uh, be willing and able whenever you're ready. Pick a day and I'm there, no problems, driving to LA, huh? Something, something, pro at that drive, love me some LA, wait, tryouts as... Oh, soon as we get back home on Tuesday. That was the alleged conversation between Lindsay and Trevor Bauer right there in that text message. And then right underneath of that, you know how I roll. Dude, I knew I knew it before you sent the message. You. And then just showing that these accusations, well, at least her trying to get her hooks in, okay? Like she read her, uh, had said prior to that, right? Getting her hooks in, then just trying to turn this into a whole manipulation situation. If you don't tell him Tatis was better, you are done via DM. This is the ultimate fail. I'm literally going to get into his head and find pine tar. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. I can get in his head. Ugh, bitch. Maybe that's what it says. Worth more than this nonsense. Oh, God. Ugh. Just the fucking white knighting is just... Ugh. It's palpable. Ugh, he's so intriguing to me. No. Sure, in... And I want to punch him in the face kind of way. He's a wackadoodle uh, like Cleveland. Sure. Uh, no wonder they were best friends. Oh, Clevenger. Clevenger. That would, that would be because Clevenger... Uh, Bauer and Mike Clevenger were teammates and... Cleveland and then Mike got traded to the Padres so she probably fucked around with him anyways and then obviously yes we have the temporary restraining order which was not held up in court right oh and it's funny uh she said that they were dating even though there was only two instances of her and Bauer hooking up which were both apparently consensual as well but we'll let that slide for a moment because if you recall, yeah, the judge hadn't Trevor Bauer major win in sexual assault case. Los Angeles County Superior Court judge ruled in favor of Trevor Bauer on Thursday, denying a restraining order to a woman who said the Dodgers... Is Oh, the star Dodgers pitcher choked her into unconsciousness and repeatedly punched her during two sexual encounters. Following a four-day hearing, Judge Diana Gould-Saltman determined Bauer did not pose a threat to the San Diego woman and that her injuries were not the result of anything she verbally objected to. There we go. Everything was consensual, according to a Los Angeles County Superior Court judge. You guys remember that, but I just thought I'd refresh this because we're going through everything. And then... Earlier this year, February 8th, Trevor Bauer will not face criminal charges following sexual assault allegations. The Pasadena County Sheriff's Office, yes, said, yeah, no, nothing to see here. After a five-month review of the Pasadena police investigation into allegations of sexual assault against him, you know, the people that would have access to literally everything, everything, okay, all of the evidence, it, uh, 
concerning this situation that you could possibly fucking find, which is the basis for the entire investigation, even for the Major League Baseball, okay, they would have access to this, the Pasadena County Sheriff's Office. Nothing. Nothing. They didn't find fuck all, okay? And this was just to charge him, not convict him, okay? Not to lock him up or anything. Just to fucking charge him. That's a very, very low threshold, by the way. And you know this is, okay, woke-ass fucking California. You know that they would love to fucking charge a straight white man who may or may not have voted for Trump and has a little bit more of a based perspective on things, except for when it comes to picking sexual partners. You know that they would have loved to try to take him down. But the fact of the matter is they couldn't find anything on him. No. Not a district attorney's office that was politically motivated to charge him with anything, okay? And no other law enforcement agency even batted an eye. Unbelievable. But yeah, no, we'll just go through this real quickly. Dodgers pitcher Trevor Bauer will not face a criminal charges. Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office announced Tuesday. Yeah, that was the LA County District Attorney's Office. Okay, that's, what's his name? Eric Garcon, who's allowing Los Angeles to become a total fucking heaping pile of shit. That motherfucker right there. The George Soros funded prosecutor, his office couldn't find fuck all. Unbelievable. That the district attorney decided criminal charges were not warranted does not mean Bauer has been cleared to rejoin the Dodgers. Major League Baseball, yeah, retains the right to suspend Bauer unjustifiably. Manfred is widely expected to do so, but not soon. Like it shows here, this was early February. We are, well, basically on the doorstep of May, right? MLB investigation is ongoing. We will comment further at an appropriate time. Bauer had two sexual encounters with San Diego woman last year at his Pasadena home. The district attorney opted not to file assault charges in the first encounter in April and domestic violence charges in the second encounter in May, determining there was insufficient evidence to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that Bauer committed a crime. Exactly. Fucking exactly. So... That brings us to the Joint Domestic Violence, Sexual Assault, and Child Abuse Policy. I've got it right here, okay? This is the newest iteration of it, and boy is it full of some flowery social justice -y language. Get ready to vomit. It's only a 13-page document, and I read through it all, okay? But we're not going to do it here because, like I said, this video is going to be long and comprehensive, but a lot of it doesn't apply to this situation right here, but... Yeah, yeah, it's it's very interesting. So if you'd like to read it, the link's in the description and all that other fun shit. Major League Baseball and the Major League Baseball Players Association here in uh, the parties desire to formulate a domestic violence, sexual assault, and child abuse policy and program that takes an absolute stand against domestic violence, sexual assault, and child abuse, but not fake allegations. Protect the legal and procedural rights of the players. Oh, really? I beg to differ provides assistance to victims and families. Oh, their victims are immediately off rip. They're victims, interesting, and families, especially information and referrals to available resources. Recognition uh, recognizes that players may also be victims in intimate relationships. Really? I would love to see that ever fucking enforced, right? Not gonna fucking happen. Focuses on education and prevention, including training on this policy. Yeah, indoctrination into the fucking woke ideology that has overtaken all of professional sports. Utilizes the most effective methods and resources for therapeutic intervention for abusers and those abused. And allows for therapeutic programs for players and the imposition of appropriate discipline on players. Appropriate discipline. Really? Anyways, here, here are the definitions, okay? This is, like I said, we're not going to read all of it, but it's important to get through the domestic violence and the sexual assault because the child abuse really doesn't, you know, even though Lindsay Hill thinks like one, it doesn't have any use in this interaction. So domestic violence, here's where it starts, kids, is a pattern of abusive behavior in any intimate relationship that is used by one partner to gain or maintain power and control. You love to see your neo-Marxist, the postmodern ideology in there over another intimate partner, right? It, to gain and maintain power and control. No, isn't domestic violence, you know, it, it, the hitting or being emotionally or physical uh, or physically abusive? That's domestic violence. Okay, it has nothing to do about power, right? Because the theoretical subordinate in the relationship could also inflict domestic violence, and it has nothing to do with power. Unbelievable. It occurs in heterosexual and same-sex relationships and impacts individuals of all economic, educational, cultural, age, gender, racial, and religious demographics. 
see 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 what's happening here this is official mlb policy by the way and it's got all of that nonsense in it domestic violence includes but it is not limited to physical or sexual violence then why have a sexual assault clause anyways emotional and or physiological physiolo well, psychological sorry no physiological that would be physical as well uh, psychological intimidation verbal violence stalking economic control economic control interesting so theoretically okay as flowery and as ethereal as this policy is if your fuck buddy asks you for some money okay and you're a major league employee and then you deny them they could make up an accusation then end up catching you a case and then be suspended for i don't know a millennia if that's how rob manford is feeling that day and then back to this harassment okay nice vague terms a uh, physical intimidation or injury Okay, you don't even have to necessarily cause that injury, but it's just injury. Okay. And notwithstanding this definition, a single incident of abusive behavior, a single incident of abusive behavior in any intimate relationship, or a single incident of an abusive behavior involving a female member, oh, now it's just female, of a player's family who is domiciled with him, domiciled with him. So, okay because we'll just take it back to the trevor bauer situation uh lindsey hill didn't live with him okay they just fucked in his house so by just being in the mere presence of a place of residence is that what domiciled is because i'm under the interpretation that that would mean living with said person but no nope, no nope, single incident right only if it's a it's a female member okay may subject a player to discipline under this policy a single incident of any of those nebulous terms could be domestic violence. Wonderful, wonderful. Sexual assault refers to a range of behaviors, including a uh, completed non-consensual, or uh, yes, a non-consensual sex act, including a completed non-consensual sex act, or sex act. Okay, so what? That what was alleged, and then not really, you know, found to have occurred in this situation. An attempted non-consensual sex act. I don't know why that's so difficult to say. Aha. Uh -huh. See, so now if you just simply attempt it, okay? It's like saying you're fucking a bitch and now we're going to get graphic. It's like all of a sudden it's like, hey, you guys are going at it. And then he just, oh, it automatically just slips into the other hole, right? Sorry about that. She could come back and say that that was non-consensual. Or if you guys are in the heat of the moment, he's like, I'd like to try ass to mouth. Nope, nope, nope. Now you're going to have to pay me off and or non-consensual sexual contact non-consensual sexual contact what does that even mean physical contact emotional contact verbal contact non-consensual sexual contact wonderful don't even talk to the other gen don't even talk to whoever you find physically attractive the other sex totally off limits Okay, but but what would it be uh, if you just turned down a, a gay guy, right? One of the players and uh, say the San Francisco Giants are in town. Okay, they turn down somebody who plays for the other team. Is is that an instance of sexual assault? Because it's remember, like it says here, a single incident of abusive behavior could be lack of consent is inferred when a person uses force harassment threat of force threat of adverse personnel or dis or disciplinary action or other coercion yeah you could have just said coercion because that's what i was just gonna say or when the victim is asleep incapacitated conscious or legally incapable of consent okay cool so now it's a, an entire affirmative consent situation boy this is the least sexy thing ever and nobody a anywhere would ever be having sex if it's like can i touch your titty okay can i grab your ass um can i take down your panties okay can i take off your bra um can i now put my penis in your vagina boy this is really hot and heavy now isn't it we're gonna jump down uh, se uh, page seven of 13 right so uh, page seven of the policy here we're just gonna jump down uh, i'll show you the heading here okay just so i'm not fucking miss misleading anybody here so procedures for challenging discipline imposed by the commissioner so okay trevor bauer's been handing it handed his suspension by the commissioner's office office right who are the ones who hand out said discipline which they can just make up on the fly by the way but here's what they need in order to come to their conclusion so a burden of proof in any case involving discipline imposed under the policy the commissioner's office shall have the burden of proving that the player committed a con or a covered act so what are the covered acts the domestic violence or sexual violence that's up top which I, I don't know what he theoretically violated by the way because major league baseball has kept the investigation behind wraps it's for them to know and for you to eventually maybe potentially find out so 
Here's how they feel justified in handing out these decisions. A criminal conviction for an offense involving a covered act or a plea of guilty, no contest or no lo contendere. So if a fucking trial happens in Mexico or some shit like that. Okay. Uh, to an offense involving a cover, uh, covered act. Okay. Whether a misdemeanor or felony shall satisfy the commissioner's office burden of proving a violation. Okay. So no contest, an admission of guilt, plea guilty, both of which... Bauer did not get, even on his court case, okay, the judge ruled in his favor. There was no no contest decision that was rendered, okay? There was no jury that was convened that ended up in a hung jury, okay? Nothing like that. It's done. It's dusted. There's no conviction. There's no admission of guilt. Trevor Bauer has maintained frame the entire time. In cases involving a criminal conviction or a plea of guilty, none of that matters. But then we get to section B. A player may be subjected to disciplinary action for just cause by the commissioner for a violation of this policy in, a, oh, in the absence of a conviction or plea of guilty to a crime involving a covered act. So if we think you did it, we can suspend you. That's how they got to this decision. Section B there is just, oh, you've been alleged to that? Yeah, we're just going to suspend you because, yeah, yeah, we're just going to need you to not show up for... Two years yeah and you're not going to get credit for time served so oh my fucking god so where does it go from here hmm? okay because like i said we went through some of this policy here and it, it's enough to make you pull out your hair in all honesty because a single instance by somebody somewhere regardless if you actually get convicted you can get suspended by the commissioner's office it's fucking baffling okay so where does this go from here right? Because you might remember that there are some defamation suits that are out there. And you know what? I'll leave you with a little silver lining on this one because this might actually end up working out all right for Trevor Bauer. Okay, in the long term, his career is fucked. He's not coming back, even if he does get the appeal, right? Because it also says in the policy as well, even when the suspension goes on, the suspended player does not accrue major league service, okay? So the contract uh, trevor bowers contract specifically is being held in stasis right now so even if he does get reinstated at the end of this shit or his appeal goes through it's going to be too much of a pr nightmare and like i said before the dodgers they've they've also been very good in this situation so they may or may not it's really tough to gauge everything okay they might cut him they might release him or they might just let him play for the next two years on the cheap okay so I'm not entirely sure with the administrative leave, if that accrued major league service, because he was getting paid, that would lead me to believe so for the two years that he's out on that contract, that's being held off. So then eventually when he does come out of this, he's going to be 34 years old at the tail end of his prime. But if he was allowed to play during that time, okay. If he's signing another deal, who knows? It's impossible to tell how well he would have been pitching, but if he would have maintained that same ERA and those same numbers that he did in his first little stint with the Dodgers there, a 259 ERA, um, he would be looking at at least a 50, if not 75%, maybe even 100% price increase. Because you just take a look at the other contracts that are signed. Like, what did Max Scherzer's old ass get just this past off season? Like, they are handing out money and the money just continues to fucking go up. So, because he's going to be sitting on the sidelines without pay, and that his future career prospects are quite possibly fucked. The fact that he has these couple, well, actually three or four in total at this point, defamation lawsuits that are out there, that could end up working out well for him because there is contractual evidence, okay? Because a lot of the accusations in there alongside defamation is also tortious interference. And what is that? Well, that is meddling within a contract, okay? <laughs> Layman's terms here, right? Lindsay Hill, with her accusations, directly screwed up Trevor Bauer's tr you know, career trajectory, okay? And then with, yes, Deadspin, The Athletic, and Molly Knight propagating the story, that's ultimately what led to this decision. So, they defamed him because uh, specifically The Athletic and Molly Knight wrote that, that Lindsay Hill's skull was fractured, which was provably false, okay? And then even after that information came out, they still continued to run with that shit, okay? And I'm sure Deadspin is probably along the exact same lines on this one. So in all honesty, yeah, there might be a little silver lining to this, but his career is over and it's fucking ridiculous because it's based on nothing. And like I said... 
maybe tomorrow if I cool down a little bit, but more than likely it'll be Monday. We'll be talking about that Washington Post article with the fucking haggard old cunt from Ohio with all of her disproven allegations. Come forward magically in the Washington Post. Do you think that they would have been bit in the ass enough recently, especially with Amber Heard and her fucking fake accusations being put on blast in that very public trial right now? You think that they'd learn, but of course not. And people still take that fucking rag seriously. So we'll be addressing that then. Hopefully you guys got a pretty decent outlook on this. Like I said, it's total fucking bullshit. But even you can see just on the side there, a third woman comes forward or just an opinion piece there. MLB's two-year ban may end Trevor Bauer's career and he certainly earned it. I'm not entirely sure what the public perception of it is. You can't really gauge it off of Twitter because it's just everybody trying to get their little cunty remarks in in 280 characters or less. And it's just mostly just going to be pile on at this point. But I don't see anything that justifies this, especially the two year long ban. It's, it, it's preposterous. It's preposterous to say the least. It's career damaging to say the most. And if the Depp and Heard situation wasn't handing out enough red pills right now to the masses, if you're a sports fan and you're paying attention into this and you're still on the fence about this intersectional dynamics and the fact that it's being deteriorated by everybody in power i hope this serves as a wake-up call if it hasn't already because my god one step forward two steps back with all that said and thank you especially if you stayed around this long because this one uh, it had to be done hopefully you enjoyed it and again feel free uh, everything that we looked at will be linked in the description so if you want to go through the domestic violence policy a little bit deeper by all means it's just as despicable as the uh, excerpts that we were reading as well and honestly the playlist that's on youtube or the videos that are still up on all of the other platforms as well they're still there if you want to go back to make sure that either i'm congruent or if there was anything that was missed in there i don't think so i have a pretty extensive knowledge of this case and if you guys have been following along thank you very very, very much and I, I hopefully somebody reaches out to Trevor Bauer so that he can have his name cleared because I don't know if there's a future in Major League Baseball but there's a future out there for him to do something now that he's just become the face of this nonsense especially in professional sports with all that said thank you all very much for the gift of your time I've been Don Consuelo I want you to follow your gut and get after it take care everyone